Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, understand a couple things. Uh, financial mistakes, they happen. Nobody's immune to them. I don't care what the social media influencers say. They didn't make all the right choices. I mean, hell, me and Alex, we don't make all the right choices. But don't look at financial mistakes as just, okay, it's a loss. Even today, even with all the knowledge and skills that we have, we still make mistakes. Today, we're just going to talk about financial mistakes that we made recently. Um, I'm going to let Alex start it off. I, I know I always got like 500 financial mistakes, but um, I'll let Alex start it off and then uh, we'll come back. But the key is listen to the financial mistake and then look to see what we learned from it. And maybe it's applicable to you in your lifestyle and maybe it can help you moving forward. Balance what you got. So I wouldn't like, so I wouldn't say I've made any recent financial mistakes. There's been some small setbacks uh, because of some recent things that have been going on, but they're not mistakes per se, but I will say the older that I get, the more I look back on say a purchase or long-term financial commitments that I've made that maybe maybe not hindering me but if i didn't have them i would be able to achieve my goals faster now and so though i mean like i said the older i get like i start to look at these things because i i, I tend to think on a very long-term basis rather than just like what's coming the next day or like next week or something and so i look at you know say long-term financial commitments a house you know, I've got my house when I was 21 and I was just thinking, I just want a house. I just want to say I have a house because I'm and I'm 21. I don't know anyone that's 21 that has a house. But the older I get now, I start to realize, you know, maybe why didn't I look at getting a duplex or why didn't I look at getting a triplex or something like that? And obviously, I've been able to purchase rental properties, um, you know, actively. But it's the idea of if I started with the duplex or I started with the triplex or a fourplex, I wouldn't have a mortgage. And if I didn't have a mortgage, that'd be pretty cool. I would have a mortgage, but I wouldn't be paying it. You know what I mean? So it'd be tenants paying it. And my lifestyle on that end would be free and free and clear. I wouldn't have that, that monthly obligation. And, you know, that's one, or, you know, when I started to pick up extra, I guess you could say passive income, I had financed the car and the interest rate was low and we used the car, especially to go out of state to look at properties and we're able to depreciate it and all that cool stuff that, you know, you want out of a business expense. But the reality is it's still a monthly obligation, you know, so could I have found a better option in a maybe cheaper car or a cash option if I just maybe kept looking, kept looking rather than having that monthly obligation. And it's not hindering me in any sense. But again, if I didn't have it, I'd be, I think I'd be rolling at a quicker pace or reaching my goal faster. So it's things like that, that I look back on that I've already done maybe years ago that I think now as I get older, you know, how would my life be now? Because those are, in my opinion, those are long-term effects that on decisions you make years ago or years prior. And and as far as the the buying the house, I mean, you don't know what you don't know. Um, I mean, me, I mean, I pay cash for my the house that I live in now, and I still think about it like, damn, why why didn't I go that way? But I wasn't in the real estate game at all when I bought my house. It was just Hey, I just need shelter. Shelter. I don't want to worry about making a payment. Just let's get it over with. Uh, but you don't know what you don't know. And then, I mean, of course, you can always reverse engineer it if you wanted to. But it's that's that's thing that happen. But I mean, it's things you learn from, and I always and I and you know you tell people moving forward like, hey, this is the mistakes I made. Uh, for the life of me, I don't know why people. Who, especially people that's close to us, you know, friends and family that go out and buy a house, why why they reach out to other family members or friends who maybe have done one transaction in their lifetime 
and ask them what they need to do instead of talking to people who've done it multiple times. Uh, I know you've had situations where people did reach out to you and you saved them a lot of money on buying a house compared to what they was doing when they was listening to other people. Um, but, you know, the one thing that the one thing that I want people to get from just that scenario there is when you when you're going out there to go buy your first house, I mean, I'm not going to tell everybody, everybody should house hack, everybody should go buy a duplex. It would be great if they did, but that's not the case. But if you're going to buy a house, talk to somebody who's done it multiple times, because the person who did it once, they have made all the mistakes in the world when they bought their first house. Get somebody that's, you know, in the game and they're talking to agents all the time and stuff like that. If you don't have friends and family members that you know that have done it multiple times, reach out. It is people on social media that actually have good content on how to negotiate a deal on buying a house, even to live in and not just a, a rental property. Um, for me, just recently, I mean, I'm I'm talking real recent. Um, I made financial mistakes of not not having eyes on. And what I mean by that is the reason why I like good property managers, not just any property manager, good property managers is they're going to make you wake up to reality. Like me, I'm very, when it comes to rental properties, I'm very big on, hey, just fix everything, leave me the hell alone so I can get back to doing what I like to do and that's acquire. And um, I had a property, well, I said I had, I have a property in Oklahoma and they was doing the turn on there. And then the contractor, third party contractor, they sent the list of stuff that needed to be done to the property. And then, so I was just like, yeah, well, whatever, get it done. And then the property manager came back to me and said, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And she just circling line items. Like, why would you, why would you pay for this stuff that's not needed? And then, so in turn, for me having second eyes on, you know, somebody, you know, hold me accountable, not just blindly just going with what I said, it saved me money there. So that was the financial impact there but it happened again with another property manager uh it was time for rent renewals and then they asked they asked about raising the rent and before i asked the question they're the sme or subject matter expert of the um the rental market in that area they was like okay it's time for rent renewals and usually every time i don't know i, I was busy doing other stuff and when they called i said yeah, just raise it. I think I said fifty dollars or something crazy like that, and and then they came back and said, "Why would you do that when the market rent is, you know, one hundred and fifty dollars over what the person was paying?" And then I had that's when I er, stopped everything else that I was doing, and then we had that conversation, and then we came to a uh, a a rent that was closer to what the market is especially considering the quality and the location of the property. But if that just not paying attention or just being too busy, you know, taking five minutes out to focus on that small minute thing, that was a couple thousand dollars impact one way or the other by, by people, by me not paying attention and me just, you know, honed in on the other things that I was doing. So those was two errors that I made just recently. I mean, in the last week that, that I did that, Save me some money, maybe save me some money on one end and made me some money on the on the other end. So, like I said, these financial issues and financial mistakes it happens all the time. I mean, everybody, you know, especially on social media, they act like they're infallible, they don't make mistakes and things like that. But it happens all the time. It happens all the time. It's not gonna be perfect. This game of being an investor, trying to search for financial freedom is not a straight line up. It's ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. You know, it's looking like, you know, the cross town, cross town freeway, you know, it's, it's turns at every corner that, you know, can go up and down. But don't ever look at a mistake to say, oh, that's the end all be all. This game's over. It's just, OK, I made a mistake and then now I won't make it again. But I guarantee you every email and phone call I get from property manager now, I'm just going to stop everything else that I'm doing because that, you know, financial future money, whatever I'm doing now, which is immediate stuff that could actually take a back seat to the future growth of the business. With all that being said, guys, 
Let us know what your financial mistakes are down below. If you feel free to share, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.